Welcome to Fallout 76, this is Jim. In this video, we're going to take a look at completing daily challenges for today, Monday, November the 25th, 2024. Let's take a look at see what we got for today. All right, we got some good ones here. I have many videos on my channel that will help you guys out to give you different ideas, different locations, easy areas, hard areas that were there if you're a brand spanking new player to the game. If you're a returning player, even if you're an experienced player, there's a particular daily weekly challenge that's giving you a hard time or trouble. I'm sure you'll find a video on my channel that will help you try to keep my videos as updated as I possibly can. And of course, you guys are awesome. The great comments and tips, which I greatly appreciated. Okay, so between today and tomorrow, Tuesday, the 26th, it's the last day, so to speak, for Invaders from Beyond. So, you know, it was a good time while it lasted. I know I'm uh, pretty happy with everyone's uh, participation on the servers there, that's for sure. It's a lot different than it has been in the past. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're going to complete the event Invaders from Beyond. Let's join this public event here. something else there pop up kill a cryptid apparently <laughs> but we'll still go through it anyway I'm gonna die here in a second oh lord I'm gonna die <laughs> oh someone's it's someone down there We were just talking there yesterday of uh, someone who's dressed like an alien and uh, all the noobs are uh, shooting at him. <laughs> and I guess I'm no different. <laughs> oh, my soul. Again, I'm a little sorry for the uh, lateness of the video. I'm just getting off my 12 hour day shift, as you guys can probably tell by now. And I appreciate everyone's patience and support. It'll be the same, the same thing tomorrow. I'll be getting the uh, daily weekly challenges out as well as the Atomic Shop update. This will be a little bit later than the, the usual. Guys, wow. So the Flatwoods monster, uh, he is considered a cryptid. So just an FYI, I don't believe there would have been a flat Flatwoods monster at the very beginning. I'm not wondering what that was. It's kind of odd getting credit for that cryptid. I think 
got him. Sweet. Always. That was very impressive. Some I guess. Humanity was built for war. I have yet to determine the percentage accuracy of this statement. Go ahead and pick some stuff up here. Nice. Yeah, I can't believe how fast these uh, these events are going. It has never been like those of you who've been playing for a while, like myself. I'm sure some of you can agree that uh, in the past it's never been <laughs> as uh, as fast as it's gone as it has this this time around. Like this is the, the best I've ever seen. What is going on here? <laughs> okay, there we go. Jeepers. It's a little annoying there, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, nothing. Okay. Alright, good stuff. That's uh, pretty cool. Alright, let's take a look here. Uh, so let's take a look at this one here before we carry on kill a cryptid. Okay, so uh, the only thing I can think of uh, during the Invaders from Beyond is, of course, the uh, Flatwoods monster, right? The little uh, alien kind of purplish guy. We do come across him once in a while, randomly in the wasteland uh, from time to time. Not just during Invaders from Beyond, so just an FYI, so I'm not too sure. I don't think he would have spawned the first round. I've never seen that happen before, but you never know, I guess. But again, a cryptid, you know, we're talking about the Grafton monster. We're talking about snally gasters, sheep squatch, for example, okay, uh, even the Wendigo, okay. So a pretty good spot for a grafted monster, of course, hemlock holes just a little bit to the south in that white open area, so one spawns there. Another pretty good spot is uh, just the north Charleston train yard, it's that big dumping ground there, one will spawn there. Uh, one will spawn down here between the Charleston Capitol building and the Somerville Dam, like on the lower level. It's like little black river, and if you get close enough, it'll kind of pop up out of the river. So those are those three are 100% guaranteed spawns uh, for the Grafton monster. And as far as I'm concerned, they'll probably be your easiest, best bet, especially if you're lower level. Uh, if you come here to the Charleston, this icon right here, there'll be a Snallygaster, and there'll be a little Snallygaster down a little bit closer towards the Charleston Capitol building. Of course, we have Snallygasters uh, right over here at the flooded train yard. Uh, we have the triplets, I call them. Three of them right up here. Toxic Larry's meet and go. And of course, there's a 50% chance we can find them up here at uh, Kitty Corner Cabins. The other 50% chance is uh, rat scorpions, right? So just an FYI there. Uh, in terms of Wendigos, of course, we can find one here at Lewisburg. 50% uh, chance we'll find one right here at the Three Points. Sometimes it's ants and other uh, type of enemies, but there is a chance... Uh, there's one right usually to the, uh, when you spawn here, the Dark Hollow Manor. I believe it's to the west, down like a little, one of those little pits that uh, surrounds this area. Okay. And of course, Haven Church, pretty good spot for a wind to go in there as well. All right, so just give you a couple of options for different type of cryptids, okay? Uh, let's see what's next here. All right. Uh, let's head back to our camp. Then we'll carry on with the next one. Hopefully our camp is there. Pretty popular spot in around the wayward area. There we go. All right. Uh, scrap drunk to produce cloth 10. All right, so cloth is a junk item that we can use the bulk and scrap method at our Tinker's Workbench. Let's take a look at that real quick. Go to a Tinker's Workbench. We go craft. We go bulk. Go to the C section. As you can see, bulk cloth. So to bulk one cloth, you need two plastic and 30 raw cloth in your stash or scrap box. Go ahead and bulk one cloth, and then you scrap it. It's hands down the fastest, quickest, easiest way, the bulk and scrap method. Uh, those are for the folks that are maybe kind of short on time and need to get the dailies done as fast as possible. Or you're just a person that likes to get them done quick and easy. 
right? Uh, but if you are legitimately looking for cloth, uh, I do have a couple of videos on my channel. Uh, burnt books are a good supply of cloth. Of course, burnt books, one of the best spots is right here at Summersville, uh, the house on the right-hand side. Uh, it used to be full of Myrics at the time, uh, maybe about a year and a half ago or so. Uh, but now you'll maybe come across me four or five week in ghouls. Okay, so just an FYI, if you ever come to that house uh, and you're on a public server and you can't find any books there, they do still spawn there. We go there all the time here on the channel. Um, it's just that, that a lot of people use that house to reset their game by picking up uh, 250 items. And of course, there's so many books in there. That's what a lot of people do. So you guys, you can go server back-to-back -back server hopping a couple times and find no books in that uh, house. So just an FYI, you just be a little bit patient. Another video I have is pre-war money, okay? And I show you uh, many great spots to find pre-war money. They're all time-stamped. And of course, when you scrap pre-war money, you get cloth there as well. All right, uh, so let's over go over to Summersville and we're gonna check out that house on the right-hand side. Now, again, we are on the public server, so we'll see what uh, pops up for us here. I know a couple of days ago we actually we actually had to uh, server hop a couple of times looking for rat snakes, so we may have to do the same thing. So here's the house here I was talking about. And there's usually a, a couple of ghouls here, so let's take care of him. And there'll be a couple of guys inside, so we do see some books here, so that's pretty good. All right, so just an FYI, I always like to try to promote this place as much as possible and explain to people that hey, you just got to be a little bit patient, okay? So. Um, Let's go ahead, we're gonna pick up a uh, couple of these books here. Of course, you know, we're not gonna pick all of them, but we're just gonna pick enough of them up. Uh, so as you can see, this is full of books. Those are full of books here. Uh, this whole stairway is full of books. This is full of books. So this is a pretty good server, so no one's ever, no one has come here yet. Uh, there'll be a couple uh, ghouls up here. You got, uh... How you doing? Lock and load, Jim. Holy mackerel. Looks like his eyes closed. <laughs> Again, all kinds of books here. These are usually on the bookshelf. Of course, the explosive weapon I have. Again, all kinds of books here. So there's tons and tons of books here to have be had even today. All right, let's head back. So we can go back to any workbench. We can go to anyone we want. Uh, another player's camp, our own camp. A train station, wherever you want. Wherever there's a workbench and scrap them. Just gonna head back to our cave, make it a little bit easier, a little bit more quieter there as well. Oh, that's an old picture there. Holy mackerel! <laughs> old Daphne there in the background. I miss Daphne actually. All right, let's go ahead and scrap these burnt books. There we go. Scrap junk to produce cloth. 10 for 10, done. And again, if you aren't short on time, the faster, quicker, easiest way is the bulk scrap method, hands down. Okay, let's check the next one here. Scrap trying to produce leather, 10. So again, uh, we can use the bulk and scrap method for this one here as well. Let's go to our Tinker's Workbench. Again, we'll go craft. Go down to the bulk section, we'll go down to the L section for leather. So to bulk one leather, you need two plastic and 15 raw leather. And then you go ahead and you bulk one leather and then you scrap it. And again, hands down the fastest, quickest, easiest way to complete this challenge. Again, more so for the folks who are kind of short on time or people that just like to do it the faster, quicker, easier way. Now, of course, we can go after animals. We can go after foxes, rad stags, brahmin, okay? A uh, real good source of Brahmin, of course, is right down here through Flatwoods. Nice and easy for all levels at all. Okay, so they'll have hide on them. Okay. And there's usually a couple spots here, like the Wixen Homestead, uh, Gilman Lumber Mill, might be one or two Moonshiner Shack, and in and around the forest area in general, you might come across a couple of hide just kind of laying around. Okay. Uh, but Flatwoods is a real good spot for hide. Just kind of look around for it. And especially the Brahmin. Okay, another good uh, source of um, leather is, of course, the Mr. Fuzzies. Okay, and of course, we can find all kinds of Mr. Fuzzies right down here at Camden Park. So let's pop down here just for one example.
Alright, so you can engage with the Scorched if you so wish, whatever you want to do. Just going to make your way over here right by this side. We're just going to kind of jump over this wall here. As we can. Alright. And right down here, as you can see, all kinds of Mr. Fuzzy, uh, Mr. Fuzzies, I guess you'd say. So let's pick one up here. As you can see, two leather and even two cloth. So you basically, <laughs> for both leather and cloth, these daily challenges, you can go after the Mr. Fuzzies. Alright. So there's a couple of them here. So two, four, six, eight, ten. How many do we need, Jim? How many need? Ten. Perfect. And I guess there's there's uh, basketballs in there, but that's more rubber. There's a bunch of Mr. Fuzzies in here as well. All kinds of them. All kinds of them to be had. Right, so good source right there. Let's pop over here and we will scrap this stuff. Again, you can go to any workbench, whatever one you want to go to, and try it out that way. I'm just going to use these workbenches here. Let's go ahead and scrap these Mr. Fuzzies here. There we go. Scrap trying to produce leather 10 for 10. And again, you could have gone after them for the cloth as well. So that's pretty awesome. What's this here? Right now. All right. Making some good time here. What's next? All right, um, let's go ahead and craft an alcoholic beverage one. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back to our camp here real quick and we'll go over that before we head out. Saving the rat steak one <laughs> for last because that's the one we did the other day that we had to server hop a couple of times. So we're going to save that one for last. Okay, so again, back here at our camp. This time we have to craft an alcoholic beverage one. And of course, you're going to need a brewing station for that bad boy. Uh, now, I just made a video, uh, put out a video there just a little earlier today before I went to work. And uh, Mr. Prince and I, who's a member on my channel there, we actually did a quest called, a uh, side quest called Wasted on Nuka Shine. And of course, you can check out that video if you so wish. And uh, if you're having troubles, is that uh, quest is really glitchy, okay? And that's one of the reasons why I decided to uh, to make it. And of course, Mr. Prince uh, gave us a hand there, but come right here to uh, Big Al's Tattoo Parlor and interact with the poster there, basically. And uh, so you can check that out if you so wish. And at the end of that quest, uh, you do learn how to craft or to build a brewing station and a fermenter. Okay, uh, not this one in particular, or these two, because these are just reskins. You'll just get the basic ones, all right? Uh, so the main thing you got to remember is what I discovered is back in the day, you used to be able to get a plan. Like, you know how you get a plan, then you have to read it or learn it? Uh, for in that case of Wasted on Nuka Shine, you automatically learn the plan, okay? And that's what we had discovered, and that's what I show you in that video, all right? So just an FYI. So let's go to our brewing station here gonna go beers fermentable beer so to make a fermentable beer we need two boiled water one corn two razor grain and two wood right and this is one of the things i always recommend to people when you're looking to uh, plant crops in your camp i always recommend corn and razor grain it's not only good for those particular type of daily weekly challenges but also good for these type of you know daily weekly challenges where we have to ferment beer or drink an alcoholic beverage etc etc so if you have corn and razor grain in your camp Definitely save yourself a little bit of time, all right? Uh, but a good spot to get corn and razor grain is, of course, right up here at uh, Cobbleton Farm. All kinds of corn at Silva Homestead. All kinds of razor grain at Billings Homestead. Uh, right around the corner from the Big House Tattoo Parlor under the overpass, we have a red barn there, and there'll be some crops over there as well, corn and razor grain. Uh, there might be a little bit over here behind the General Steakhouse, just to name a few spots, all right? 
Uh, so let's go up. We haven't been up here to uh, Competent Farm for a little while, so let's pop up here today. We'll grab our corn and razor grain. Again, when you're looking to harvest crops or as a perk card that will help you out, it's under Perception. It is called uh, Green Thumb. We twice so much on harvesting flora. So instead of one, you pick up two. Now I have it equipped as a focus mainly on daily weekly challenges so for me to have it equipped like this it just saves me time but you can have it at least down here in your back pocket and have something else in its spot but it's definitely a card to hang on to especially if you're a herbivore okay and where it really shines is if you are on uh public service with the people you can go to those places that i mentioned and they'd be cleaned right out okay but all you need is a couple plants all right so to help you out so as you can see two corn added so we got four corn pop over here to get some razor grain two razor grain nice okay so there we go so we should have enough there's a four razor grain and four corn so that's perfect so basically for every corn we need two razor grains so we only need one uh alcoholic beverage here let's check to make sure yeah all right let's head back to our camp Looks like somebody is close by. Now there are going to be ghouls around here. Uh, I'm thinking somebody was up here recently. As I don't see any ghouls around. At least on this server. Right, let's head back to our brewing station here. Let's go craft. Fermentable beer. So again, boiled water. To make one boiled water, you need two dirty water. Or if you happen to have one of these bad boys, the boiler that we got maybe a couple of seasons ago, this guy right here. Okay. And of course, wood. Everyone has wood on them. You know, just go ahead and harvest from a couple down trees. Let's go ahead and craft one. Here we go. Craft an alcoholic beverage one for one in the terms of a fermentable beer. It's as easy as that. Alright, what's next here? Do we have any best built camps here on this server? Let's check. Let's check. I thought I saw one earlier. It would be a shame if there wasn't one. Yeah, isn't that so? Oh, there's one right there. Perfect. All right, so let's take a look at this one here. Use photo mode to take a photo at a best built camp one. So this one here, we don't need the Pro Snapflex camera, as it says there, photo mode. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to go to this best built camp here. Now you can go ahead and lock it if you so wish. You can fast travel. You can utilize the free fast travels in game, whatever you want to do. Now when you are taking a photo, either photo mode or taking a camera picture with a uh, Pro Snap Deluxe camera, it's better to be inside the area of the camp, what you think it is, okay? Because if you're outside of the green line area, now I know it's hard to find that out, but if you're outside looking in, it won't count. So I suggest that you find yourself uh, in around a building, on top of a building, or inside the area where you see uh, stuff that's built like this, so we know that this is within their camp, okay? Uh, now, don't uh, sweat, because some people do have their homes uh, locked up for whatever reason. You don't have to be inside of a home or of a building, because not all camps have a building. All right? As long as you're roughly inside of the building area. This, right? Let's go photo mode here. Go to the map screen. The bottom of the screen says photo mode. Whatever button is view, that's what you select. Let's go ahead and take a camera picture here. There we go, just so they use photo mode to take a photo and it best built camp one. Now, just in case, uh, if you guys did not know, uh, sometimes your photo gallery will be full. So if you try to take a photo using photo mode, you, it might not let you because it might say your photo gallery is full. So if that ever happens, all you do is you go to the menu screen, you go down here to photo gallery, and as you can see, it all depends on whatever you, whatever platform you're on in terms of space that you have. So that was the last picture. So if I try to take another photo, it won't let me, right? I actually have to make room. And all you do is just make some space. You just delete a couple. 
and uh, that's all you gotta do, just like that. And then you go ahead to take your photo using photo mode. All right. I just thought I just thought I can add that in, because I know it might happen to someone, and maybe someone that's new to the game and might not know how to resolve that. All right. What's next here? We got one more killer rat stake five. So again, uh, rat stakes, you know, are random throughout the wasteland. We can find them in around the forest area. Yeah, if you kind of spawn here the Green Country Lodge and make your way up to the Wayward, uh, you may come across uh, the odd rad stake or two, or maybe even a group of three of them. So that is a pretty good spot. But again, it is random. It's not 100% guaranteed. Okay, you're even walking around anywhere in the forest area. Even I find down here in the Skyline Valley region, we can come across quite a few rad stakes, and they're usually glowing. Uh, for me, uh, I find between the Shenandoah Visitor Center just walking down uh, towards Dark, Dark Hollow Manor. Uh, usually in that area, you'll come across maybe a couple of glowing uh, rad stakes there as well. Just an FYI. Uh, one of the best spots for rad stakes is right here at the Dent and Sons construction. And I just want to give a get a quick uh, look here. I can't remember. Someone did mention the other day about an event that you can uh, spawn in. Just kind of quickly going through my phone here real quick and I uh, don't really not really seeing it but um, what's this yeah right on so person had mentioned that uh, there's a, a little event or quest called thrill of the grill at uh, hemlock holes okay and uh, if that ever spawns in for you so hemlock holes is uh, right up here so if that spawns in for you, they mentioned that there's a herd of maybe four, uh, five to eight will spawn in. So that's Par22 who had mentioned that. So I thought I'd mention that there to you guys. Uh, I never actually did that myself, but you can always try it. So let's go down here to Denton Sons Construction. This is a pretty good spot. Now, if you do come here and you're on a public server with other people, you can come here and all these things be dead. You might have the server hop a couple of times, which we had to do the other day. So we're actually going to spot, when we spawn here, we're actually going to go east. All right, so we see them moving around there, so that's good. So that's, that's uh, pretty awesome. We don't have to serve our hop this time around. And you'll come across anywhere from five to six of these bad boys. Now, if you're down on the ground, these guys will attack you, so FYI. These guys are a little bit more aggressive. There we go. Kill a rat stake. Five for five. Okay. Now I am on a uh, server with other people. So if somebody else on the server were to come up here within the next half hour, these guys would be dead. <laughs> All right. Uh, but they can always wait for the cooldown to stop, which is roughly about half an hour, I would like to say. Or you can just server hop until you get on a server. I think this guy was a uh, legendary. Yeah, right on. That doesn't happen very often. But I'll take it. Take that all day long. Alright. What's next? I think we're done. Yeah, just like that, guys. Nice. Uh, let's head back to our camp and we'll go over weapon of the day. Of course, it's the same weapon I've been using uh, this past week. All right, weapon of the day, Jimmy. What do we got here? This fixer right here, if not in combat, plus 100% bats accuracy at plus 50% action point cost, stalker's build. Uh, projectiles explode for plus 20% weapon damage, plus 15 bonus bats critical charge, plus 40% armor penetration, plus 100% sneaking speed, plus 15% stealth and shadows, Mods, powerful automatic receiver, stabilized short barrel, true stock, perforated magazine, reflex sight dot suppressor, and of course this awesome looking rustic paint. It's pretty cool, I love it. The VT in the side, sharp. Uh, 83 damage, 45 ammo. Of course it being a automatic, it's a commando build. Let's take a look at the perk cards here. Under procession, we master commando, commando, expert commando, all maxed right out. We have Obviously, you have Tank Killer, Concentrated Fire, Suppressor, 
covered operative, evasive, white knight, adrenaline. Of course, legendary perk cards, these don't change for me. They always stay the same and they're maxed right out. All right, so there you guys go. So again, last full day of Invaders from Beyond. I hope everyone was able to get the uh, plans that they wanted. Uh, again, tomorrow will be Tuesday, so we have a fresh set of weeklies. Uh, Atomic Shop uh, weekly update, which is pretty awesome. Again, I'll have those videos out just a little bit later than usual. And uh, just my 12-hour day shift there tomorrow. And I appreciate everyone's patience and support during that time. Please like, subscribe, and share when you have the chance. It really helps me out. I have to thank my channel members, Artistically Arranged. Michael Edwards, Nigel Whiffin, Heather, White Tribe, Robco, Mr. Shelton, Drake, Stamps, Mr. Prince. Not me, but me. Yes, me. That's me. G double three K Drew Andrew Demon Confounded Bridge. Thank you all so very much, and I hope you all have a nice day.